Uh, hi everyone, uh, I am David Diaz uh, and I'm part of the Protocol Labs team. I work on IPFS, Leap Peer to Peer, Protocol Labs Research, and more recently I've been building a research group uh, inside Protocol Labs with a focus on resilient network research. The, the talk I have uh, for you today is about Gossip Sub, a scalable, extensible, and hardened peer-to-peer uh, -peer pub sub router protocol. Uh, I want to start by really thanking uh, the opportunity to be part here of the Ready Layer 1 event. So far, the organization has been amazing. The setup has been working flawlessly. I've, I'm really impressed. Like, uh, uh, I, I'm always like inspired and motivated to participate in virtual events, but I'm always a little bit skeptical, but I, this one is working so flawlessly. Thank you so much for putting it together. So what is the agenda for this presentation? Uh, I'll start with a motivation for peer-to-peer -peer PubSub. Um, and then I'll go into the evolution of Leap peer-to-peer -peer PubSub from flood sub to random sub to gossip sub. So you can kind of like follow like what all the idea got developed. Then I will introduce you to the security extensions, the hardening of gossip sub. Uh, and uh, last but not the least, I'll share with you what is available for you to use today. And so if you have been following Leap Peer to Peer Pubs up for a while, probably the last two sections are the ones that are most interesting for you. So what is the motivation for Peer to Peer Pubs up? So when we built IPFS and when we built Leap Peer to Peer, we wanted to enable real-time applications to work on the network. Uh, we wanted to enable uh, developers to build the rich experience that users got used to in the Web 3.0 world. And we wanted to do it without relying on any piece of centralized infrastructure. So we wanted to make sure that people could connect to each other, propagate updates uh, at real time without relying on any piece of centralized infrastructure. And so our first experiment and our first product was really Orbit Chat. And this is back in 2016 at DEF CON 2. We showcased Orbit Chat, the first user of Leap Peer to Peer Pub Sub. Uh, an IRC-like application that's worked on a browser, so just using uh, just IPFS and just Leap to Peer connected to other nodes, and was able to create a chat platform without relying on any central point of communication. This was really great. It was a really great achievement. We were really proud, and we kept building on it. Uh, we built collaborative do uh, text editors. Then we started seeing applications appearing in the community, like distributed e-commerce applications, social networks, even uh, virtual reality and virtu uh, augmented reality applications, uh, photo sharing apps that then uh, got repurposed as building blocks for building many, many more apps. And now uh, the IPFS and Leap Peer Peer ecosystems are kind of like exploding in terms of uh, usage. Uh, and as IPFS uses Leap Peer Peer, everything that builds on top of IPFS is building on top of Leap Peer Peer. So why is PubSub so powerful? Well, the first thing to note is that message-oriented communications is very easy to understand. It's very easy to build on top. You subscribe to a topic, you publish on messages on that topic. And it has support for different topologies, for multiple types of interaction patterns, from blogs to forums to chats to uh, social networks and so on. Like the, the topology that you set and the pub sub router that you use really can benefit you depending on your use case. Uh, as very loose coupling, right? So we can separate the producers of content from the subscribers of content and, and make them work uh, in synchrony. And it's very scalable because as the network grows, the network kind of like helps itself. So it adapts as the network grows to provide the, the scalability properties that it needs to, to serve more and more users. But there are also many, many, many challenges. Uh, and so one of the challenges, especially with IPFS and Leap Peer Peer, is that we are operating on a permissionless network. We cannot control who joins or leaves. So we cannot control or block someone that is a malicious actor that is trying to damage a network. Uh, we cannot control the network topology. Uh, we don't have any command center, so we don't have um, the notion of like a broker inside uh, a peer-to-peer -peer permissionless network, uh, which adds to the challenge. Then there is the network churn. So the topology, the network itself, the mesh, is rapidly changing because nodes come and go very rapidly. And um, 
optimizing for latency bandwidth usage or deliver guarantees is really a conversation about trade-offs. Uh, depending on the, the, the usage, depending on the interaction pattern, the developer has to pick what is best for their users uh, and be willing to make some trade-offs uh, among these properties. And of course, there are malicious actors that can come to attack your network uh, because they have bad intentions. So uh, with these challenges, we took them add on and we have been like evolving lip to peer PubSub for a while. Uh, and and I, I just want to make a, a quick point to clarify. So you hear me say lip to peer PubSub and then I say gossip sub. And now I'm going to even introduce one more concept, uh, flood sub. And so to, to explain this uh, in a simple way, think of lip to peer PubSub as an interface. So this is the interface that the apps built on top of Leap Peer consume to subscribe and to publish. And then things like Flood Sub and Gossip Sub are routers. It's basically the, the subsystem that teaches Leap Peer, Peer and teaches the network how to set up its own topology, how to propagate messages, how to add nodes to a specific mesh and so on. And so because Leap Peer, Peer uh, PubSub is an interface, we can have multiple PubSub routers that give us different kind, kinds of guarantees. Today, we have two robust implementations, Flood Sub and Gossip Sub, but you can also bring your own. You can also experiment. And the way that Leap Peer to Peer works, and, and you might have uh, heard this in another talks, is it's very modular. So even the router is not dependent on a transport. You can have Gossip Sub over TCP. You can have uh, Flood Sub over Quick. You basically pick your building blocks and, and you develop on top. So the first router that we implemented was flood sub and, and the reason why why it was like really the simplest protocol that we could come up with uh that had a really high level of resiliency uh, it used ambient peer discovery and so what this means is like it uses is used things like the ipfs main network ht to find other peers and the routing was achieved by flooding Hence the name flood sub. So you might have seen kind of like these summoning circles uh, before in your network's research exploration. And uh, I, I, I picture one here to kind of like explain how flood sub works. So in flood sub, imagine like these blue circles are the nodes that they have all of these connections um, painted in pink. And on one node wants to propagate a message to all the other nodes. So that node will use the channels that it has open to propagate the message to the other nodes. So in one round, it reaches four nodes. In a second round, it reaches all the nodes. So, so far, so good, right? Like, it looks like a very good protocol, 100% message uh, delivery. The problem with FloodSub is that nodes will try to help each other by forwarding the messages as well. And here is the flood. Because other nodes will try to help each other by forwarding the messages, suddenly we are using too much bandwidth by sending messages that nodes already had received, hence duplicating effort, and hence wasting bandwidth that is precious. Floatsub is very simple to implement. It's very robust, so it's very hard to attack. It's very hard to miss a message, given that everyone in the network is just like sending the messages to each other, and really gives us this property of like minimum latency, because the, like the, the router doesn't pick any latency path uh, doesn't prefer any any path to minimum latency. It just picks all the paths, so one of them must be the minimum latency. Uh, but like the problem is really bandwidth inefficient. And so to visualize this, uh, I have like this uh, simulation, which exactly it's playing right now. And so this is a network of like 100 peers with five messages per second run for two seconds. And and I've expanded the the time here by 10x so that we could see. It, um, it going. And as you can see, there's like a lot of chatter in the network. There's a lot of connections happening, a lot of messages. Um, but at the same time, uh, we'll see that like it's actually quite efficient. Like it will finish quite soon. And um, this might sound very useful because if it finishes quite soon, then uh, we achieve our goal, which is delivering all the messages. But like we have to remember that we are always limited in bandwidth. Um, and uh, once the, we start like abusing the bandwidth that we have available, we might start choking in ourselves, which then creates problems. So we started exploring. And, and the next uh, PubSub router that we implemented that we don't talk a lot about it was really uh, an experiment, was random sub. So random sub uh, 
takes inspiration from Fletza, but rather than picking every single path to send the message, uh, it picks some path at random. And um, it was less bandwidth intensive, but like, as you may uh, be guessing, it creates dark spots where, because now you're picking some paths at random, there might be a chance where there are some nodes in which they never receive the message because their path to that node never gets picked. So we, we knew like we needed something better, something that picked uh, the best from Floodsub, but that didn't uh, use as much bandwidth. And this is where we get into Gossip Sub. So Gossip Sub is a protocol that trades latency uh, for bandwidth efficiency. And this is really important. Uh, nodes cooperate with each other uh, on a self-stabilizing routing algorithm uh, to make sure that the network rebalances itself to make to provide the best delivery to every single node that is part of the network. And also important, it supports for protocol extension. So Gossip Sub is not like a final state. You can always add more things to Gossip Sub if you want. So Gossip Sub is actually uh, an hybrid of two networks. Um, nodes construct meshes for message propagation, and then nodes uh, use the remaining connections to spread up uh, metadata, which we call the Gossip, hence the name Gossip Sub. So on the first network, which we call the full message network or the data plane, uh, nodes establish reciprocal peering agreements uh, that basically say, hey, like all the messages I see, I will send to you. All the messages that you see, please send to me. And so these agreements are really important because uh, it's how these meshes between nodes get set up to make sure that the, the nodes get a propagation channel to all the other nodes and that they can trust the, those propagation channels. Um, by default, these nodes connect and like, establish at minimum uh, six uh, reciprocal peering agreements, but this is just a parameter. You could like change this value at any time for your configuration. Then there is the other network, which is the metadata network or the control plane. And this is like a very dense network. So we basically take on all the other connections that we happen to create. And rather than sending the messages, which are more expensive in size and, and, and in the number of messages that appear, we send uh, only gossip in this network. And, and we use this gossip to inform other nodes of what we have received and what uh, we are missing. Uh, as nodes join the network, they announce to their peers the subscriptions of the topics that they're interested in. And so this is where uh, the process starts of like establishing meshes as nodes will tell others the topics that they are interested. So they will join meshes of the same topic so that they get the message faster. Uh, nodes keep a partial view of the network. So in, if they learn about some node that has been publishing on a topic and if they decide to subscribe to that topic, they know which node to contact. And as the network evolves, like these subscriptions can be updated. So you can like subscribe and, and subscribe uh, over the lifetime of a node. Then there are really two key messages uh, that are introduced with a gossip sub protocol, which is the graft message and the prune message. Graft is to establish those recipro reciprocal uh, peering agreements that uh, I told you about. And pruning is essentially when you don't no longer want to have that agreement, you prune uh, a channel to dissolve the debt agreement that you had with the other peer. Additionally, uh, we also have support for message validators. So if you have a use case in your application where you want to have a custom message validator to drop messages beforehand before they get forwarded into the network, you can also add that. And when nodes uh, send gossip, they send gossip about multiple types of information from topics that they have subscribed, messages that they have seen, peers that are connected, um, subscription changes, and, and messages that uh, they want, that they see that someone uh, has received, but they haven't. And therefore, they are asking the network to get that message for them. This gossip gets sent at a, a, a regular epoch. By default, is one second. But again, this is just parameters. You can um, always select whatever you want for your use case. And again, by default, we select six peers to send this metadata. So we also don't send the metadata to everyone at the same time. Otherwise, <laughs> we would be flooding and get the network. Um, at every epoch, we send this gossip. And from that, uh, gossip, then peers decide which new uh, reciprocal agreements to establish in case they, they detect that they are failing to receive some messages or 
which peers to uh, prune from their agreements from their previous mesh if they see that like that peer no longer contributes to a topic that they are interested in. And just like for you to be able to compare, let's see now the visualization for gossip sub. And so you can see now comparing like to the previous one in flood sub, uh, this one is way more light. Uh, you can see the reds here are the messages like the, the previous case, the yellows are the gossip messages. And you can see that the network is way more balanced. We don't see nodes abusing uh, as much of the channels, uh, but we can also observe that like it's going to take a little bit more time for the full propagation to get completed. So again, trading bandwidth for latency. And to make the, the drive the point home, let's see them in comparison side by side. So you can see now um, that on the left, well, you can even guess, right? So you can see like <laughs> who is Flutso and, and, and who is like Gossip Sub, uh, not only because one is completely abusing the bandwidth that is available on the network, uh, but also because it already has finished while Gossip Sub is still going. What, what our uh, simulations demonstrated is um, if bandwidth is limited, and as far as I know, uh, we still haven't figured out to beat the speed of light, so we'll always be limited by the bandwidth. Uh, flood sub peers will eventually choke on themselves if they have too many peers or too many messages to send, and so they start failing to deliver messages. And gossip sub comes in with better latency results in those scenarios where uh, basically the flood sub network is constrained by by the bandwidth. So Gossip sub can even, even be faster in larger networks, which is a really interesting property. Um, so, kind of like quick recap with Leap Peer to Peer Pub Sub and Gossip Sub, we get like the real time updates that we wanted in the beginning. We get resilience to network churn because nodes can like uh, graft and prune as new nodes join and like uh, self stabilize the mesh of propagating messages. Uh, you get to adjust this trade off between band bandwidth and latency, and like it keeps scaling as the network grows. But this is not all. So the this is gossip sub. What we have been like really working hard recently is hardening gossip sub, uh, and we call this the version 1.1 of gossip sub. So when we were hardening gossip sub, we studied several classes of attacks. In here, I talk about three that kind of like encapsulate the majority of the attacks. Anyway, it's just like to to give you a, a notion of what we are dealing with. So there's the class of attack which is the civil attack. And the civil attack is when someone creates fake identities, uh, basically multiple malicious peers to either squat areas of the network uh, or potentially put the peers in specific locations to degrade the quality of the network. Then another type of attack is the eclipse attack where a node puts itself in a specific position to eclipse, to put on front of all of the nodes that he wants to attack so that it can control the messages that those nodes uh, see and get. Then a third class is the spam attacks, where malicious nodes will just like abuse their network to attack a specific node until it chokes on itself, causing a denial of service. Um, so what about, okay, so these are the attacks. We wanted to mitigate them. What are our mitigation strategies? And so <laughs> before like going into the detail of each one of them, I just want to say, I'm really proud of the team. Uh, they work really hard on crafting a spec um, that is actually uh, really, like it's five pages long, super quick to read, really easy to read with some examples. Uh, if, if you are interested on like understanding the details better, I really recommend going through the spec. I'll do my best here uh, to try to explain these details, but please bear with me <laughs> as, I, as I try to explain this uh, because it gets a little bit more complex from here. So the mitigation, uh, the first mitigation that we came up with is peer scoring. So if you have been on peer-to-peer -peer research for a while, you know that like often one of the common solutions is really the reputation game. And so that's what we did. We added peer scoring so that peers can evaluate other peers for their contribution in the network. From time in the mesh, um, the, the latency to deliver the first message, uh, the invalid messages that they sent for a topic, uh, application specific scores and so on. And so with this scoring, we have multiple thresholds from sending all the messages to the peer to not sending all the messages to the peer to potentially just like remove that peer from our mesh and not consider that peer anymore uh, to contribute to the network. Then another mitigation is flood publishing. So uh, when we see that um, 
the, the messages that we are sending are not getting to the peers that we want, we can enable an optional flag to enable flood publishing. And so this kind of like overloads the, the mesh uh, rather than just sending to the six peers that are on our mesh, we'll send to everyone that we are connected. And, and so this is kind of like doing flood sub in a localized manner where we send our message to so many peers that then we get that guarantee that like we eat some honest node uh, along the way that will deliver the message uh, that we have published. Then we have also peer exchange on Prune. So before uh, Gossip Sub relied on an ambient peer discovery to find new nodes. Now, when some connection gets, uh, well, so when some reciprocal peering agreement gets dissolved, uh, the peer that is uh, asking to dissolve that peer agreement can offer in exchange some new peers for that peer to connect. So this way, uh, rather than having to go to the DHT to find new peers, the network can help each other uh, by providing a peer disc discovery service. Then there are spend protections. Essentially, um, rather than doing a lot of work to avoid uh, to responding to wrong messages, we just now ignore them. Um, and like if we observe spam uh, being generated by some peers, we will drop their scores to the point where we can consider to to discard them from our mesh. Then uh, last but not the least, there is the explicit peering agreement. So this is very useful for networks uh, federations, for example, where there are multiple parties collaborating together. Uh, they can just say, keep a connection open between these machines, these data centers, these laptops, these PIDs that will never get dropped uh, out of the mesh. So there will always be a, a peering agreement between those places so that organizations can collaborate. And so again, this is like a really high level overview of all these mitigations. I really recommend checking out the spec. What I have for you is, well, wrapping up is saying, hey, you can try this today. Like Gossip Sub, our reference implementation in Go is ready to go. Uh, and other implementations are coming. So we have Gossip Sub in JavaScript, in Rust, in Python, and in Java. Uh, and the teams are also working to get the version 1.1 implemented uh, for that language ecosystem. Uh, we didn't stop only at the implementation. Uh, we actually did a pretty extensive evaluation plan where we developed multiple test cases and test plans uh, to test how Gossip Sub and how these mitigations behaved in uh, large networks. We used um, a new platform that uh, if you are interested, you can watch Raul's session tomorrow. Uh, the platform is called TestGround and it really enables us to run large simulations and get quantifiable results of what are the performance and, and properties of the networks that we are building. Uh, we, as the Gossip Sub team, added an extension to TestGround, which is an integration with uh, Jupyter uh, Notebooks. And so what you are able to do is grab any of those test plans that I previously mentioned, open the test plan, uh, you can adjust the parameters, the number of nodes, the latency, et cetera. Um, and then you can run it to visualize the results. Um, and this is extremely powerful because it enables everyone that is a researcher, an enthusiast, a hacker, to kind of like tinker with different parameters and find new optimizations for the multiple interaction patterns that exist uh, that users can like uh, benefit from. And uh, I have one more thing, which is uh, we produced a 60 page report <laughs> out of like this very extensive and very comprehensive evaluation that we will be sharing soon. Expect in June to see this report published uh, in the Leap Your Peer website and the research.procol.ai website. Uh, right now it's in the review stage. Uh, well, I'm really getting to the end here. I wanted to make sure to have a slide just to dedicate a lot of love to everyone that has participated in creating the Gossip Sub 1.1, but also everyone that has contributed to Leap Peer Peer PubSub over time. Uh, many people have contributed with code, code reviews, opening issues, testing, writing tests, writing the spec, or even just with the research ideas where we take our inspiration from to build these kind of protocols to share with everyone. So this is all I have for today. Thank you so much for your attention. Uh, I'm happy to take questions on the, the time we have left here. Also, if you want to join the community, like always pass by our Leap Peer to Peer uh, IRC channel on Freenode. You can also access it with a matrix, with metrics, uh, or go to our forum at discuss.leapyourpeer.io. That is it. Thank you. And now 
I'll stop my screen share so that uh, I can see what people are asking. What comes after Gossip Sub? So we have in the works, well, in the next exploration phase, uh, EpiSub, so Epidemic Broadcast Trees. Uh, this is like more research on like scalable peer-to-peer -peer PubSub. Uh, we have a, a spec in progress to discuss these ideas that take inspiration from the main paper. Um, and yeah, that's like where we want to explore next. We also, as the ResNet Lab, have an open problem and an RFP open for scalable PubSub for peer-to-peer -peer networks. So if you are really interested uh, on PubSub and peer-to-peer -peer PubSub, uh, I recommend checking on github, github.com slash peer-to-peer slash notes. There is a folder there that says open problems. And then inside there is the scalable PubSub open problem, which will, it, it's a really good document to welcome you into what PubSub is, what are the challenges, what is the current state of the art, what has been ha uh, tried in lip 2 peer slash IPFS, what has been tried in the whole research ecosystem from what we know, uh, and kind of like kind of like defines uh, a baseline of like what would be the ideal goal uh, to inspire people. And uh, if you check our RFP in uh, research or protocol.ai, you can apply for a grant to work on this stuff, which is very exciting. How does the gossip see know when it reached its end? So the, the gossiping, so nodes cooperate with each other, but they limit themselves to just say, hey, here, here's what I know of like the peers that I'm connected, right? And so it's not that we have a gossip that kept like hopping from peer to peer and like building up. It's more, here's what I know. Now you make your decisions without what I know. And I also get everything that everyone that I'm connected to, what they know. And like it's with that information that then I can make a decision to see to say, oh, it seems like you have been receiving some messages that I have haven't. So maybe now I should connect with some other peers that can get me closer to the publisher to to get the message. Well, either 100% delivery or uh, sooner. Or if I'm missing some message, I can also say right away to you, hey, like, can you give me? Like it seems like you received something that I haven't. Can you just give that message to me? So, but like it, it's really localized. So every node has a partial view of the network and not the entire network. All those gossip. Okay, we have a question here. We're just very excited about our preview. Can you comment on optimization of message dissemination? Um, so we we have seen like really great results, um, in, and it really goes back to the the network sizes. Uh, we tested with networks in simulation of like ten thousand nodes. Uh, and we managed to make sure that the the delivery was under uh, a second. Uh, like we we in a simulation, we could get all the messages uh, to be delivered with a latency uh, equal or less than a second. Um, and even like in cases of attack, we could get that delivery to always be below the two second threshold. Um, so in terms of um, current amount of data retention replication in the latest version of IPFS. Uh, definitely more of an IPFS question, but also relevant for all peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, we, IPFS, the protocol itself, doesn't control who stores what. And so it really is up for each user to decide uh, what that user pins, what that node pins. Um, the, the network messaging itself could be used either to propagate updates about a specific piece of content. So imagine like you have a website, like a, a forum uh, or like a blog or something, you could use this messaging layer to propagate like updates of that website very quickly to users. Uh, or potentially you could use the top sub also to distribute blocks of a, of a, of a file uh, rather than using the same, uh, the, the, the system that is today, which is BitSwap. Uh, that's like something we have been discussing and exploring. We haven't really tried, so I can't comment uh, anything else on that yet? Um, protection and span going to remain uncoded and addition for nodes direct intelligently to conditions. That's a, a, a great question. So, ideally, ideally, so right now we have a network with a lot of parameters, right? But like humans can only do so much <laughs> on tuning up parameters. So, uh, ideally, what we want to get at is a stage where we have captured a lot of interaction patterns from other networks, from other applications. And then we can feed that into some model 
that can figure out what is the ideal optimization, uh, what are the ideal parameters. So that's the then we find what what is the optimal point. Like so the um, the the parameters that will give us the minimum latency possible and for the minimum bandwidth, but also that uh, parameters that can adapt for specific network uh, changes. Uh, and so the, the way we think about it is very similar to what happened with TCP. So TCP for many years uh, was considered like a dry field because, well, there was no more human that could come up with a TCP uh, congestion flow algorithm that was best than the ones that were already invented. And there was like always a question of trade-offs. And then someone basically uh, created a new version of TCP that used machine learning to develop a better model. And 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 I totally recommend everyone to check it out because it's called TCP Remy. And they have this chart that shows how TCP performs. And like you have all of the TCP previous versions developed by humans. Um, kind of like very close to the reference axis. And then you have TCP Remy, which completely blows them away just because, well, the the model was able to figure out a way, a, w a better way to, to optimize it. That's a, that's a great question, Sonia. Uh, yeah, like the, I, I don't have like a top of my head answer. I, I will need to like just basically run a simulation and for that case, uh and, and and give you like the answer for the network size that we would run the simulation with essentially but it's something that uh you you will be able to do so if you want to drop by by one of our channels like peer to peer on freenode or discuss the protocol ai we can even help you uh get that set up so that you can play with it so node based ml so yeah like so something that would grab basically like a lot of history from multiple uh, users, multiple use cases more than users, and that could like figure out what would have been the ideal parameters to resist to attacks, to to optimize for delivery uh, rate, to minimize latency, and so on. Oh, Juan is posting here the links uh, that I was referencing for boom filters. That's a great question. I'm sure we have, we have. I don't have it top of my head, like what is the current statement right now? I, I need to check, double check that. Um, well, our current roadmap uh, has a two month horizon. <laughs> and uh, in one of the months is just like getting the, the report reviewed and shared with the community so that we can welcome everyone to read the report, understand our results, comment, contest the results, um, and, and also run the test plans and, and like, like show us what what you can do with with it, and, and like see if you can like find new optimizations. We are also now we invited uh, an external auditor to audit the spec, the the code base, the implementation, so so that we can have like a an additional um, like degree of confidence and additional certificates that like the thing is ready to be used by the masses. And so once that is done, we'll release it to the with the world. Then uh, as part of that roadmap is also getting all the other implementations to upgrade so that like you can use Gossip Sub on its prime state in all the languages. Um, be beyond that is again, like open problem, RFP, exploring uh, epidemic broadcast trees uh, and, and yeah, whatever the ideas people have. Thank you all. Like, yeah, uh, I hope this was fun. Um, yeah, reach, reach out. Uh, Tell me what you think, try it out, um, send us feedback. Everything is on GitHub, everything is open source. Um, yeah, have fun. You're all the best. Thank you so much.